in this hallway we have a lighting circuit that is currently one way. That means it can only be switched on and off from the one position. That makes it extremely difficult at night. When you want to walk down to the bedroom at the end, you have to switch the light off here, which is not really ideal. So we're going to put an extra switch down at that end of the hallway. We're going to fix this to the wall and then we're going to run a new cable up the back of this and also up the stub position at that side. The cable will then link these two together, creating the two-way lighting circuit. It's relatively easy in this house because this is a stub partition wall and it's a bungalow, we can go straight up the wall and into the actual loft space and back down. This hallway is to be decorated shortly and that is why we are taking the opportunity to do this now in case we make any messes of the actual plasterboard, it can soon be patched up before it is decorated. We want the light switch to position approximately there. I have marked a line, which is where we're going to put the top of the back box to. I've actually measured that distance from the coving, so it's exactly the same height as the other switch. You'll notice here that I've got some magnets, and I've used these magnets to identify where the joists are, because we don't want to be cussing an all out of the, where the joist is, that would make it extremely difficult. So I've chosen a position in between the two joists. We can now fit the light switch there and the cable will run directly up into the loft and then we can run that to the other light switch. We're going to sink this dry lining back box into this wall so we're going to position it there and then we're just going to get it level before drawing around it. Once you've got it level you can then draw around that and that has now given us our position for our back box. We can now remove all the magnets because we know where the studs are. I'm now going to use a multi-tool to cut out this square in the plasterboard. Before I do that I'll put on some gloves and also some safety glasses. You'll notice that I've put an envelope below the square that I'm cutting out. That will collect all the dust and will save a lot of cleaning up later. Obviously the back box goes that way, so we're going to remove the knockout from the top of there to allow the cable to go through it. Unfortunately we can't film in the loft because it's too dark, but I'll just describe to you what we've done. We've gone up in the loft and we've found this wall, which is the external wall of the property. That bedroom there is actually an extension. So this is the external wall. So what we've done is we've measured from this wall, 6 inches, that is to the centre of the box that we just put on this wall. So we know if we go up in the loft and measure six inches away, there's actually a, a joist that runs along the top of here in the loft. And we've actually found where the top of the stub partition wall is and we've drilled down it using a 16 millimeter drill bit. We now need to run the cable down this partition. So we're gonna use a cable access kit like that. These actually screw together so you can make them as long as you want. And we're gonna be using three core and earth cable. This is what you would use if you were wiring a two-way lighting system or a three-way lighting system. This is a one millimeter three core and earth. So we're now going to tape the end of that to the end of the cable access kit, go up in the loft and we're going to push the cable down the partition until it comes out where this box is that we've just cut out. I've now got an helper up in the loft and it is now feeding the cable down the stub partition using the cable access kit. So I'm just going to keep an eye out for it and when I see it I'll grab it and pull it through the hole. So I can now pull that through. Now we've got the cable through, I'm now going to fit the back box. So I'm just going to feed the cable through it. It doesn't matter that it's too long at this point and then we can just push that into the hole. And you'll notice that that is a nice snug fit. Once that's in there, we can then push the lugs out to the side. When we tighten the switch up, that will grip the plasterboard and that will hold the back box firmly in position. So this is the consumer unit and you can see that the downstairs lights are clearly identified. But you should never take it for granted that 
that switch isolates all the downstairs lighting circuit you always need to check so we're just going to isolate that switch we can then lock off the MCB using a lock off so I can now put the padlock through there and there is no chance of anybody switching that circuit back on whilst we are working on it. As an extra precaution, we're just going to put a label on there that says do not switch on. It's a good idea doing this if you live in a house where somebody may come in and switch the electricity on whilst you're working on it. We've now isolated the lighting circuit and we're now going to remove this switch. Before we touch any of the electrical terminals in there, we're going to ensure that the circuit is dead using a GS38 approved voltage tester. We're just going to test this is working by pressing the auto test, which it is. So I'm probing all of the terminals that are in here and there is nothing there at all, that is completely dead. We now just need to check that the tester is still working, which it is, so we can now continue. I have now got an off cut of the three core and earth cable. I'm just going to try and push that up through the grommet to ensure that it fits. And it is a bit of a tight fit, but it does actually fit up there. So we now know that we can actually get the cable in there. So I'm now going to use the cable access kit again, and I'm now going to push this up through the grommet and up into the stud wall. We tried feeding the access kit up the stud wall and we can actually get it past approximately this point. So we're going to cut an all in the wall there and then we can see exactly what's happening. We've tried from above and below each time we're hitting something in there so there could be a noggin in there. So we're going to cut that piece out and we're going to take a look. When you do this you need to be careful. What you don't want to do is cut your cables at the back. So you need to make sure that you just go actually through the plasterboard. Right. Now I'm just going to push a screwdriver in there, see if we can break out this piece. You can see that the cables are there and just there we've got a piece of wood which is actually stopping us from getting the cable access kits up there. The piece of wood isn't actually even fixed in position. It's just a loose piece of wood that's stopping us getting our cables up. We're now going to feed the access kit up through the grommet in the back box. And we've now got the cable down at the switch. We're now ready to wire up the new switch. You'll see that I've put some green and yellow earth sleeving on the earth wire and I've just left that inside the box because there's nowhere to terminate it to. We've now got three wires. We've got a brown, a black and a grey. I have put some red insulation tape around each one to signify that it will be live at some point. So we're now ready to terminate those into the terminals on the back of the switch. If you look at the switch, you will see that we have a common, an L1 and an L2. It doesn't matter which wire you put where, as long as you do exactly the same at the other switch. So we're going to start off by putting the brown into the common terminal. We're then going to put the black into L2. And then we're going to put the grey into L1. We need to make sure that each one of those is nice and tight. You 
whenever you've done any wiring like that it's always a good idea to try and pull them out with your forefinger and thumb to make sure that they are correctly terminated. Now we've done that we can now replace the switch on there and we can fix that on there using the screws. That's now secure. We can now go to the other switch and make the terminations at the other switch. I know this looks a little bit busy because there are two switches next to each other. All you need to be concerned with are these two wires here. The one that's in COM and the one that is in L1. All you need to do is remove the wire that's in COM. Just undo the L2 terminal. And all you need to do is place that into the L2 terminal. So we've now got from the existing switched wires, we've got one in L1 and one in L2. Now all we need to do is wire up this new cable that we've put in into the existing terminals. So we just replicate what we have done at the other switch. So the brown goes into common. The black goes into L2 along with the other wire. And then the grey goes into L1 with the other wire. You can then check all wires are tight by trying to pull them out with your forefinger and thumb. Now we've terminated the wires like that, we can now push this carefully back against the wall, ensuring that we don't trap any wires when we push it back. And then we can fix it back in position using the screws. Once you tighten the screws up, you can then go and restore the electricity. When you're finished, you will then have a light that you can switch on and off from two locations. Now all we need to do is patch up the access hole that we cut in this wall earlier. I'm now going to glue these pieces back in using some grab adhesive, ensuring that we don't get the adhesive on the cables. So now I'm just going to push these pieces back in. When that's dry, all you need to do is put some filler in there and give it a light sanding and once it's papered over you will never know.